Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about titration, sometimes referred to as neutralization. And before we start talking about titration, here's a disclaimer. It says, prior knowledge of the topics below is essential before watching this video. And I recommend that you first watch the video on dilution, followed by the video on calculating ion concentrations using the pH scale. So let's talk about titration. Let's take a look at what titration is and then let's perform several calculations involving titration or neutralization. And so what is titration? Well, it says right here that titration is the experimental process of determining the concentration and or pH of a known volume of strong acid by adding a known quantity of known concentration of a strong base to the acidic solution. So what we have here is a titration setup that you will see in a high school chemistry lab or a first year college uh, chemistry lab. And so let's take a look at what's going on. We have a flask here and in this flask we have 30 milliliters of hydrochloric acid which we, need, we know uh, is a strong acid, right? And so what we don't know about this acid here is we don't know the concentration of the acid and we don't know the pH of this acid right here. And so what we can set up is a titration uh, lab or a titration experiment to, to determine what the, the pH of this hydrochloric acid is as well as the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. And so what we do here is we take a strong base we take a strong base like sodium hydroxide and what we do is we figure out the concentration of this sodium hydroxide ahead of time. So we're using 0 0.100 molar sodium hydroxide. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some of this in this burette right here. So we're going to fill this up to an arbitrary amount and then we're going to measure how much we put into this burette. So we added approximately 100 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution to this burette. Next thing we do is we add a few drops of an indicator. In this case, we're going to add a few drops of phenolphthalein. And phenolphthalein indicator turns pink in basic solutions. So normally, hydrochloric acid is clear. Sodium hydroxide uh, solution is also clear. However, phenolphthalein, when we add this to our uh, hydrochloric acid, is going to stay clear. It only turns pink when it's exposed to a base. If Phenolphthalein indicator turns pink in basic solutions. And so what's going to end up happening once we add our phenolphthalein here is we're going to add some sodium hydroxide to our acid here drop by drop by drop. And while this is happening, we're going to notice that this solution here turns pink. Since we're adding base to our acid here, the phenolphthalein is going to show us a pale pink color. And so what we can do is we can swirl this Erlenmeyer flask around until the pink disappears and it's clear again. And so we're going to keep doing this. We're going to add drop after drop after drop after drop until we reach what is called an end point. And it says right here the end point has been reached when the solution stays a pale pink color like we see right here. And so at this point, all the acid that was in this Erlenmeyer flask has been neutralized by our sodium hydroxide solution. And so what ends up happening, there's a very small amount of base here. And we can see that as a very pale pink color since this phenolphthalein indicator turns pink in basic solutions. And so we know that the chemical reaction has reached its end point when this turns pink or a very pale pink color and stays pink. If we swirl this around, it doesn't turn clear anymore. It stays pink. We reached our end point and the neutralization reaction has reached its conclusion. And so what we're able to do is we're able to determine how much of our sodium hydroxide solution we use to titrate this acid right here. And from that, what we can start to do is calculate the concentration and we can calculate the pH of our hydrochloric acid using our data right here. And so first thing we have to do is write a chemical reaction equation. So it looks like we have hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. And we're going to end up with water. The hydrogen from our acid is going to re 
bond with the OH from our base to produce water. And our sodium from our base is going to bond with our chlorine from our acid to produce salt. And so there's our chemical reaction equation, and we know by looking at it that it's balanced, right? We have the same number of each atom on both sides of this arrow, so our chemical equation is balanced. And so as we take a look here, we can see that everything is in a one-to-one -one mole ratio. And so how do we figure this problem out? How do we calculate the HCl concentration and the pH of our hydrochloric acid? Well, because we see here that the hydrochloric acid is in a one-to-one -one mole ratio with our sodium hydroxide base, we can use this formula right here. MV equals MV, where this right here is our acid, and this right here is our base. And M stands for the molarity of our acid. M right here is the molarity of our base. V is the volume of our acid. V is the volume of our base. And so in this problem, what we're trying to figure out is the concentration and pH afterwards of our acid. So we have to figure out M. So we're going to divide both sides by V here. V cancels. And so it looks like to get the molarity of our HCl, we'll take the molarity of our base that we use to titrate this acid times the volume of our base divided by the volume of our acid. And before we can start plugging numbers in, when we're working with molarity, our volume needs to be in liters. And so right here, we see that this is 30.0 milliliters. We need to convert this to liters by dividing by 1,000 or sliding the decimal to the left three times. If we do that, we'll end up with 0 0.03 liters right here. If we take a look, the amount of our sodium hydroxide that was used to titrate this is right here. And so what we can do here is convert this to liters as well by dividing by 1,000 or sliding the decimal to the left three times. And so if we take a look here, we can now plug in these numbers. What is the molarity of our base? What is the molarity of our base? It says it's 0 0.100 moles per liter times the volume of our base. What is the volume of the base used? It's right here, 0 0.0723. 0 0.0723 liters. And what is the volume of our acid? The volume of our acid was 0 0.03 liters. 0 0.03 liters. And so we'll put this in our calculator. We're running out of room, so we'll put it right here. And so the concentration of our HCl is going to end up being 0 0.241 moles per liter. So that is the first part of our problem. Let's take a look at the second part. We now know the molarity of our acid. The molarity of our acid solution is 0 0.241 moles per liter. And if we're asked to calculate the pH of this, well, we know this is a strong acid. Hydrochloric is a strong acid. It's going to dissociate completely. And so to get the pH, we simply take the negative log of our H plus concentration. And so if we take a look, we have 0 0.241 molar HCl. This dissociates completely. And so we're going to end up having 0 0.241 moles per liter of H plus. So we're going to take the negative log of 0 0.241. And we're going to end up with 0. 618 is our pH of this solution, if we're using the correct number of sig figs here. All right, so the pH of our solution, our hydrochloric acid solution here is 0.618, or 0 0.618, and the concentration of it is 0 0.241 moles per liter. So this works well whenever we have a chemical reaction where the mole ratio is 1 to 1 between the acid and the base. But what if that's not the case? Well, let's take a look at one final example. In this example, we are working backwards. We are going to figure out how to titrate a strong base using a strong acid. And so in this problem, if we take a look here, 
It says, what volume of a 0.327 molar hydrochloric acid solution is required to neutralize 28.3 milliliters of a 0.397 molar barium hydroxide solution? And so if we're taking a look at this problem here, what we should probably first do is go ahead and write a chemical reaction equation for this neutralization reaction. So if we take a look, we have hydrochloric acid, which is HCl. This is going to react with barium hydroxide. We know barium is a 2 plus charge. And we know hydroxide is a 1 minus charge, so we'll need two of these. What are the products going to be? Well, the hydrogen from the acid is going to bond with the OH from the base to produce water. And the barium is going to end up bonding with the chlorine or chloride to produce barium chloride. Now we know barium once again is Ba2 plus and chloride is Cl1 minus so we'll need two of these. And so we know that barium chloride if we look on a solubility table is soluble in water. So here we go here's our chemical reaction equation and if you didn't write the correct chemical formulas for these two compounds, then the whole problem might end up being wrong. So make sure you do that correctly. Second thing we have to do is balance our chemical reaction equation. So let's go ahead and do that. So now our chemical equation is now balanced. So let's go ahead and solve this problem now without using the dilution formula. Let's just think about what's happening here. If you take a look at what's happening, we have two substances that are reacting together. We have HCl and we have barium hydroxide. They're going to neutralize each other, right? And so what we're trying to figure out is the volume of hydrochloric acid. So what we know about our hydrochloric acid is we know the concentration. We simply know the molarity is 0 0.327 moles per liter. Secondly, we know that molarity equals moles of solute, in this case HCl, per liter of solution. So, if we know the molarity is this, then if we can somehow figure out the number of moles of this, we can solve for L. We can figure out the volume of hydrochloric acid quite simply. And so, in order to figure this information out, you guessed it, we have to look at our barium hydroxide. What do we know about our barium hydroxide? Well, first of all, we know the volume. We know the volume is 0 0.0283 liters. So what I did here is I divided this by 1,000, slid the decimal to the left three times, and that's what we end up with. We also know the concentration or the molarity is 0 0.397 moles per liter. And so let's take this a step further. Once again, we know that molarity equals moles of solute divided by liters of solution. And so if you take a look at this problem here, we know the molarity. We know the volume. So we know the molarity and we know the volume. We should be able to figure out the number of moles of barium hydroxide. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll multiply both sides by L here. L is going to cancel. And so to get the number of moles, it's simple. We take the liters of the solution times the molarity. And so how many liters of solution do we have? We have 0 0.0283 liters. And what is the molarity of our solution? It's 0 0.397. And this capital M here means moles per liter. Liters will now cancel out. And we're going to end up with 0 0.0112 moles of barium hydroxide. So why is figuring out the number of moles of barium hydroxide important? Well, it's important because we can now turn to our chemical reaction equation that's been balanced. And if we're taking a look at this, what this is telling us is that for every one mole of barium hydroxide, there's going to be two moles of HCl. So if we know the number of moles of barium hydroxide, we can simply set up a ratio and figure out the number of moles of hydrochloric acid. So let's go ahead and do that. If we take a look, we have 0 0.0112 moles of barium hydroxide. 
we need to figure out how many moles of HCl this is. So if we're taking a look at our chemical reaction equation, this is telling us that one mole of barium hydroxide to two moles of HCl. And if we put this in our calculator, we are going to end up with 0 0.0224 moles of HCl. So this is not our final answer. But if we figured out the number of moles of barium hydroxide, we can look at our chemical reaction equation, set up a mole ratio to figure out the number of moles of HCl. So now take a look over here. We now know the number of moles of HCl. That's right here. We also know the molarity of our solution. That's right here. We can now figure out L, which is what we were asked to find. So let's go ahead and solve this little problem right here. So if we're taking a look here, we want to figure out what L is. And so let's multiply both sides by L. L now cancels from here. And so moles, I'm sorry, liters times molarity is going to give us the number of moles. But we're asked to figure out liters, right? We're asked to figure out liters. And so we need to divide both sides by the molarity. This will now cancel. And so the formula that we're going to use to solve this problem here is to get the number of liters, we simply take the number of moles and divide it by the molarity. So how many moles of HCl are we dealing with? Well, we just figured that out right here. Number of moles of HCl is 0 0.0224. What is our molarity? It's right here, 0 0.327. And when we put this in our calculator, we are going to end up with 0 0.0685 liters of HCl. So we just figured out the volume of HCl that was needed to titrate 28.3 milliliters of a 0 0.397 molar barium hydroxide solution. So there you go, that's titration. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner that's gonna subscribe to my channel and feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I hope you guys found this helpful.